Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, this is Katie Heil with Double Radius. I'm the Director of Business Development over here. Um, we're happy you're able to join us and be on this webinar. We have one of our best partners, RF Elements, here to talk about migration to horns. Um, and they are going to, um, at the end, we'll also be showing our new launching of our Canadian website, which um, and we'll go through where you can find the RF Elements as well. But I'm going to introduce Tassos and Caleb from RF Elements, and they will be starting the presentation for us today. Hello, good morning, everybody. I'm Tassos with RF Elements, and we have uh, Caleb here as well, who will be chiming in uh, throughout the webinar, probably, and definitely during the, the Q&A. Thanks for joining us. Uh, today, we're doing our Migration to Horns webinar, and this is a kind of webinar that you know, kind of goes through the different uh, approaches and best known methods when you're trying to migrate your network from your traditional sectors uh, over to um, uh, horn antennas from, from RF elements. Oh, hold on, I'm not, it's not clicking here. Give me one second here, sorry. Quick technical difficulty here. Quick, send in the clown. Hey, everybody, this is Caleb here. Hey, this is really funny. Okay, okay, we're good. <laughs> I clicked on the wrong button, and my slide should change now. Okay, so why migrate to horns, right? Uh, there's a few few reasons. Obviously, strong interference is a reason. Uh, if you have unstable throughput, it's probably something to do with modulation rates that are that are jumping around uh, on your network which also leads into latency issues uh, with your network and then eventually you know all this comes down to basically customer complaints right customer starts complaining because you have interference and unstable throughput and all these different byproducts of basically noise on your network and when it comes down to it, this also uh, creates difficulties for you to grow your network Right, so uh, once you have noise, uh, it usually means that uh, your, you know, your your network is kind of saturated as far as uh, frequencies go and what you can do with it. So uh, migrating to horns and horn antennas definitely helps you kind of mitigate and get past a lot of these, uh, you know, typical issues that WISPs have uh, when they're currently using, uh, you know, traditional patch array and antennas. So now, some of the problems when people migrate to horns is really they're just not sure where to start. You know, do they use an ultra horn? Do they use an asymmetrical horn? Do they use symmetrical horn? The really the you know migration path from sector to horns is kind of unclear. And hopefully this webinar will go through some of that. Um, some of you may have already tested you know our horns and your initial results are just you know a little fuzzy still. It doesn't really make sense. You know, uh, you, you're not seeing what you expect to see. Uh, when you, uh, you know, try horns for the first time. So it confuses some people. And hopefully, again, as we go through this webinar, we'll kind of go through some of those issues that people have seen. Again, the best known practices, which is the feedback from our customers on how to migrate to horns uh, successfully, right? So we will go through really, there's, there's two types of horn deployments out there. You know, the hybrid or the augmented coverage uh, method is, is one of the most common ones, especially in the beginning. And this is where you still have your traditional sectors, but you use horns to augment your coverage in different ways. And we'll go through that in, in much more detail later. And of course, the all horn network, right, where you have nothing but horns on your towers, which is uh, pretty pretty simple to figure out how, how that one goes. But there's things to know about that as well. So, you know, before you start migrating to horns, again, there's a few things that you should know and understand about horn antennas, right? So, you know, the 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 way to kind of learn this is obviously doing some research online, right? There's a, a lot of knowledge base out there. When you migrate to horns, you should really focus on the problem that you really have. A lot of people try and go all horns right away without really you know, looking at, well, what, what's the problem I'm really having? What am I really trying to solve? So you don't always have to go all in on horns uh, right away. You know, even though, you know, horns are uh, very, 
RF efficient because they only you know transmit and receive signal from the direction that they're pointing but it's also you know very important to make sure that you use your available spectrum wisely and understand the spectral limits of your network right uh, you know you don't have to run 80 megahertz channels if you're selling 10 megahertz you know 10 10 megabit packages and stuff like that right so so again um, you know using them properly also you know comes down to uh, methods and, and ways in which you operate your network as well and then really keep your expectations you know realistic right uh, again what you're trying to you know you have to look at the problem that you're trying to solve and, and not try and solve everything at one time so a lot of people think that when you you know kind of migrate to horns that you have to really forklift your whole network and that's really not necessary right you can kind of start uh, in you know uh, off of a single sector, you can put up a, a few different horns to try and or to take your customers and move them over to the horns, and then you can decommission your sector after that. So it's not like your whole entire network will go down if you migrate to horns and you have to tell your customers, hey, it's going to take two or three days to get this and you won't have internet. So you can actually do this quite seamlessly um, without the customer ever noticing um, that you even change technology. Hopefully they'll notice later when things get better, but they won't they won't uh, have any downtime. Um, you really need to know where your customers are, and we've gone through this a gazillion times uh, with customers, you know, because when you use a traditional sector, they have lots of side lobes and back lobes and stuff. And uh, we see it all the time where, you know, uh, a WISP thinks that their customer is, you know, connecting to the north facing sector, but they're really coming into the back one. You know, um, because sometimes when customers are too close, the side lobe or the back load of, a, of an antenna can show up stronger than the main lobe of another one that's, uh, you know, pointing in a different direction. So it's important because, again, when you migrate to horns and you try and put all those customers on that AP, you know, onto it, the customers that were in the back will no longer connect, right? So this is kind of the the fuzzy results we talked about earlier. This is one thing that you'll see where you think that, well, you know, horns are terrible because, you know, these other guys have no signal or really bad signal, and that's because horns are bad. And it's not, it's because of the placement of your customers uh, due to your kind of really wide and sloppy sector uh, allowed customers to be connected where they really shouldn't have been. So it's important to know where your customers are before you start this kind of migration to horns. Um, you know, <clears throat> using an antenna with the right gain, we've we've been pushing since the beginning. Our message has always been, you know, gain isn't everything and using the right amount of gain. And uh, we've shown to the market that actually lower gain horns perform better than higher gain sectors in, in a lot of cases, right? So basically, if you have a uh, you know, a group of customers that's only a mile from the tower and, you know, they're in a 90 degree swath, there's no need to use a sector antenna, as you can see on the left, that would send signal or hear signal from way past a mile, right? So you could use kind of one of our lower gain 90 degree symmetrical horns in order to service these customers rather than uh, putting up the higher gain asymmetrical 90 horn uh, for no reason. So again, these are just some kind of, you know, uh, good pieces or good methodologies for deploying wireless networks correctly, right? Um, using down tilt, right, is something that's really important to optimize your coverage. You know, when you use a traditional sector because it's much wider, you can't really do that. You know, you don't have the, because it's so wide, you don't have the independent control at different azimuths to adjust your down tilt. So if you look on the left, when you have two sectors and you try and adjust the down tilt for some closing customers and then you put a second sector um, with less down tilt to get further customers, you have this big overlap, right? And you have customers that are effectively hearing both sectors, where if you go to horn antennas like on the right, you can split that wider sector into smaller 30 degree horns, let's say, and then you can adjust the down tilt for each of these independently to again, Build the coverage to where your customers are and not send signal out beyond that or hear signal from areas you don't want to, right? So again, this is just some best known methods and some good methodologies, again, for designing RF networks 
and really optimizing your coverage, which horn antennas allow you to do. Um, one of the best tools you have for this is our online calculator, right? So we have a really good uh, calculator uh, on our website that will allow you to, again, pick the antenna you want to choose and adjust the down tilt up and down. And you can kind of see what the you know, optimal down tilt will be for your furthest client, right? So this is something that you could use to, again, try and help you figure out which, uh, you know, which horn to use first off and then what kind of down tilt, uh, you know, you may need if your coverage area grows later, you know, you could always climb the tower and just, you know, remove some of the down tilt to make the signal go a little bit further. So it's a, a really fantastic thing and um, really gives uh, WISPs uh, a whole nother tool in their toolbox uh, to be able to kind of, again, design and, and, and kind of morph their network as, as they need it. <clears throat> you know, using the right antenna beam width is also uh, very important because, you know, there might be sections from your tower uh, where you don't have any coverage, right? So there's no, not really necessary to use too many wide antennas or, you know, use your kind of 320 degrees or your standard four 90 degree antennas with you know all the different antennas that we offer and all the different beam widths you can again kind of customize your coverage and use you know the, the proper gain slash beam angle horn for your typical deployments uh, and again uh, this is a way to reduce noise on your network and it's uh, it's great and with you know rf elements you know we really you know offer you the the kind of ultimate tool set for WISPs when it comes to horns. I mean, we know that there's some knockoff companies out there who are trying to kind of ride the coattails of what we started, but nobody really offers the kind of full gamut of, you know, symmetrical and asymmetrical antennas. And again, in all the different beam angles and all the different gains that uh, are available today, including our ultra horn, which is really kind of, I mean, it's the, the, the best, sector antenna on the market uh, for being it is very narrow it's 15 degrees but that 24 dbi of gain and 99 percent beam efficiency of the antenna is just outstanding and i'm sure anybody who's on this uh, webinar right now who has used the ultra horn uh, as a sector antenna it's pretty kick-ass and, and i'm sure that they would uh, they would tell you that as well that would be their feedback so um one of the last things uh, that we look at here before we kind of go into the migration of the stuff is really understanding that a balanced network is a happy network. You know, uh, you really want to uh, have every access point have a very balanced MCS rates, right? You don't want to have a wide variety between MCS4 up to MCS9 because this takes up airtime. Every time your radio needs to switch modulation rates, you give up airtime. You give up time in which your radio could be transmitting packets rather than adjusting modulation rates. And the reason we're saying this is because so you understand that even a, uh, a an access point that has a lower average MCS rate could perform better than one that you have some customers at the maximum modulation rate and some at a minimum modulation rate. So it's really important to make sure that, again, your customers, you, you're not installing customers that are, you know, at the, the max and the minimum, you know, of your radio's capabilities. And horn antennas, because of their balanced beam, because of their uniform gain, and all the other characteristics that horn antennas bring that sectors lack, gives you that ability to maintain a, a low delta and a, a better uh, MCS rate across, which gives you higher throughput and lower CPU uh, load. So overall, a better better performance for, for everybody. The other thing that's real different for uh, horn antennas is their kind of unique beam shape, right? We have the symmetrical horns, which have a symmetrical pattern, which means that the uh, the antenna is just as wide as it is tall. So the vertical and horizontal beam widths are the same. And when you compare that to a traditional sector, again, it's very different. And uh, a lot of people don't understand that when they first look at horns and they don't understand why they perform the way they do. So it's important to point that out, right? You know, a lot of our antennas also have an asymmetrical beam and that's where it's wider in one 
cut versus the other, right? So it could be uh, 30 degrees wide and 20 degrees tall or 30 degrees tall and 20 degrees wide. So it's really important to understand the differences between all these different antennas and their correlation of gain. So um, before we go into the coverage, I kind of went over the, the, uh, the beginning stuff. If there's any questions here, I can start taking some now or we could just wait to the end. I don't know how we want to do this. Do you see any questions coming in, Katie, at this point? Yeah, there's no, no question. Oh, go ahead, Caleb. I was going to say, yeah, nothing, nothing right at the moment. So I think we can yeah. keep chugging along. Perfect. Yeah, okay. just if you have questions, I forgot to mention at the beginning, but you can just submit them in the, the Q&A box um, in the GoToWebinar and then we'll, we'll, we'll stop, toss those in between and we can answer them. Yeah, yeah, and again, if anything that uh, I say sounds far-fetched or just totally wrong or doesn't make sense at all, please ask the question. There's no question that we won't answer. So, um, so we'll go into augmented coverage, which I mentioned earlier is the first type and the most kind, uh, kind of the most common uh, deployment for horns, or the hybrid coverage where you have sectors and 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 horns. So, you know. <clears throat> How do you go about, you know, this, you know, augmenting your coverage and why would you do it? Sometimes you're trying to offload oversubscribed APs. I'm sure everybody has this. You have a an access point that has way too many customers on it and it's affecting performance. Uh, maybe you're just trying to add capacity to your tower, right? Um, you could also uh, maybe be looking to add smaller, you know, like lower gain, wider horns for your close-in customers. Um, and keep your sectors up for your further away customers. Um, there's also the kind of using our higher gain narrow horns for kind of some higher density deployments. Um, sometimes uh, WISPs want to just add higher throughput packages with horns uh, and keep their traditional sectors up for kind of, again, the lower speed, best effort type uh, customers. Um, Another really popular one and, and, and one of the best benefits that uh, most WISPs see when starting out is using horns in between sectors to perform that, you know, edge of sector performance. As we kind of showed earlier on the kind of balanced network is a happy network. As you go from the center out to the edge of a sector, you'll notice this is where you see your customers with those mismatch MCS rates where you have a customer that has a chain zero at neg 50 and chain one at neg 55 and you're wondering why is that 5 dB difference there and that's because a traditional sector doesn't have uh, really good coverage towards the uh, the edge of the sector that's where the overlap uh, starts uh, happening and affecting your MCS rates so a lot of a lot of WIST will use horns where those two sectors come together to kind of uh, improve that performance. And we'll go into that visually to kind of show you. So the first part again is kind of offloading uh, or adding capacity. So here we can see, you know, two sectors that uh, have way too many customers. So they're suffering uh, for lower throughput, high latency, because again, there's more, more customers than that AP can handle on that sector. <clears throat> so what you can do to add capacity is again, you can throw up a couple of horns in, let's say, the more dense portion, maybe, of that sector, offload those customers onto the horns, and now the sector that you had behind has less customers, therefore less CPU, better timing, and, and therefore you can increase the performance by, again, adding some capacity to, to your network. The smaller, wider horn for Closing customers is something that's pretty popular as well. Maybe you have a tower in town, right? So you have a lot of kind of uh, customers and higher density in you know in town where your tower is, but then further out from the towers where it gets a little bit more rural, where you have the kind of that farmland, so you have customers more spread out. So in this type of deployment, you could use horns for these closing customers. You can put a horn up to kind of just pick up those customers that are a mile or less away from the tower and then leave your traditional sector up for that, you know, five, six miles out from the tower type thing. And this, again, will help uh, overall in a few different ways, uh, help that sector perform a little bit better by keeping, let's say, those act 
timing uh, at the same the same same rate because of the further distances and you can put the closer customers with a different app timing on a different AP on the horn. So this is uh, another way that you can augment your coverage to try and improve things while you're transitioning to horns. Um, using the kind of larger, higher gain, narrow horns uh, for higher density deployments is maybe again, you know, in your coverage area, there's a neighborhood, right? So maybe you have a cluster of customers that are pretty tight in a specific area. Again, a lot of WISP, what they'll do is they'll kind of put up a 30 degree horn and kind of spotlight, right? They kind of point it just into that little community there and get those customers off onto a different access point. And then again, you can leave the other customers on your traditional sector uh, to try and again, you know, increase the performance of that sector by offloading a lot of the capacity. And that's what you're gonna see here is really it's about offloading the capacity of your traditional sector to augment your coverage to start. Um, sometimes WISPs want to sell higher throughput packages with horns, right? So maybe there's a cluster of businesses or something like that that you have in an area, uh, maybe some sort of, you know, outdoor food truck venue. It could be anything, right? So any, anywhere where you want to, you know, basically sell uh, a different type of service, again, you could use horns to kind of point into those specific uh, directions, 30 degree horn, or maybe even our ultra horn, um, and provide, again, a different quality of service. Uh, you can provide a, a service with a different, you know, terms of service for uptime and availability on a different access point. And a lot of times, even with these kind of uh, augmented coverage that people do, especially with businesses and stuff like that, is maybe, you know, you have your traditional sector has kind of the, let's say, lower end radio from your preferred manufacturer. Uh, on your sector, and then you put the higher end radio uh, from again from your preferred radio manufacturer on a horn to kind of optimize everything radio and antenna technology. So, a lot of things there that you can consider, and and why a lot of people migrate to horns. And then finally, again, improving the edge of sector performance. So again, where you know the the sectors come together on the edges this is where again you have those mismatches uh, of gain and beam performance and this is typically where you'll see uh, your customers have the worst connections if you go look at your network and you kind of map out all these customers and you look at the ones that are on the edge i can pretty much guarantee that you'll see uh you know worst performing uh cpes in this this path versus anywhere else and like any antenna even our horns the sweet spot is basically down the center or the bore site right so it's not that much different except our horns have uh you know different uh better beam performance throughout the entire sector so here again you can point horns down the the alleyways let's say or where these uh, patterns come together offload those customers onto horns and therefore increase the performance uh, overall. So really, oh, I have an overlap here. Hold on, technical difficulty again. One second. And here we go. So as I was saying, you know, earlier, you know, sectors, you know, and horns really, it's, you know, not the end game. Um, it's not really what you should be looking for. Um, it's really when you, you know, change everything over to horns is really where you start to see it. Because as long as you continue to have sectors on your towers, you're going to have side lobes, you're going to have co-location issues. And you're going to have overlap and interference, right? So to really see, you know, some of the amazing things you you may have, you know, heard customers talk about when it comes to performance with a horns is is really going to everything with horns and kind of where we're going uh, in this in this webinar now to talk about again new towers, 100% horns and the different kind of options that, that we have there, right? So, you know, <clears throat> there really is an unlimited option when you consider that you can combine our symmetrical and asymmetrical horns together in order to build out your 
cover uh, your tower coverage. There's really kind of two different methods. There's the uniform coverage, and this is where you know a WISP will use your kind of standard geometries, four 90 degree sectors, or six 60 degree horns, or even 12 30 degree horns, or you can go 18 15 degree ultra horns if you want. The uniform coverage again is using the same antenna as uh, the same antenna azimuth to build out your full 360 degrees coverage. We'll also talk about some of the benefits for the custom coverage based on, you know, again, your, your customer layout. You know, horns give you the ability with all the different gains and beam angles to kind of paint your coverage area and uh, add it where, you know, where it's needed. And then you can add, you know, swap, swapping these horns out later as they're needed. So again, the uniform coverage is, is quite simple, right? You have customers, you know, out at the kind of same maximum distance in every direction and the density is, is pretty pretty standard so you just have to figure out well if i only want you know uh 10 to 20 customers per ap you know and i have 200 customers out there then you just have to do a math on how many horns you need to split that up in order to uh get the you know the, the right amount of horns uh for your deployment the custom coverage is a, a little bit different. Again, it still kind of takes into account uh, where your customers are, this distances uh, that the horns need to go uh, or their signal needs to go. I mean, you have some close in customers that you could use some potentially lower gain horns. Um, if you have some high densities, you can use the more narrow horns. So again, this gives you the ability to kind of paint coverage and it's something that is, is not at all possible with uh, patch array uh, sector technology. And then again, you know, you could really add and change the horns as needed. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't, I, I can't afford to start off with, you know, 12, 30 degree horns, right? So, you know, you really don't have to. You can start off with the kind of low cost, 90 degree symmetrical horns at first. You know, it only gives you a mile to two miles, depending on the radio, uh, the radios that you're using, you can deploy that first. And as a, you know, area grows, you can then take down that 90 and put up, you know, 330s as you see here in the animation that's starting in the upper right-hand corner. It's like maybe, you know, a new neighborhood opens up further away or something, you know, and so you can take down that 90 degree and go to 330 degrees. If the density isn't up, you can replace, you know, that 90 degree symmetrical with a 90 degree asymmetrical for more gain so really there's a lot of flexibility and, and again this kind of this becomes maybe one of the issues there's so many options that uh, people get confused and this is why we like to go through all the different uh, possible or possibilities with horns and how you can deployment there's really a lot of ways and we've really haven't run into many issues that we weren't able to kind of resolve uh you know some way or another using horns and here's again just some real world pictures kind of showing you uh the things that we've been talking about you know a lot of a lot of manufacturers have things on spec sheets and they they talk a good talk but then you go out there and you try and deploy deploy it the way they say and it doesn't really perform so i mean these pictures kind of show you how you can see here customers are mixing again you know ultra horns with symmetrical horns and asymmetrical horns they're stacking them up next to each other and uh even though a lot of people think you don't have enough channels in order to you know support this many horns uh you typically do um the reason it doesn't look like you do is because you have sectors right now right so once you look at your spectrum through the eyes of a horn you'll start to find channels all of a sudden that become available because you're hearing less noise uh, we talked about the kind of balanced network is a happy network thing as well what we see in a lot of customers is a lot of customers are, are running 40 50 sometimes 80 megahertz channels because they're unable to deliver the speed uh, to their customers on a smaller channel. And the reason they're unable to is because their antenna performance is so bad, they can't get those higher modulation rates. So what we, we often see is a lot of customers going, when they decommission a sector at 40 megahertz wide channel, they end up putting up a horn at 20 megahertz and able to offer the same speeds or even better than they were before, right? So this is how 
horn start freeing up and uh, building uh, a better spectrum coverage in, in your area and because they're they're way more efficient in that way. So again, some of the final takeaways as we kind of come to the end of uh, the different types of coverages that we have here is again, use the correct gain horn for your acquired coverage, right? So there's there's no need to just go to the highest gain horn the way people went to the highest gain sectors in the early days, right? So use the proper antenna for the job, the right tool for the job. Know where your customers are before you start deploying. So again, um, you know, you're always gonna find that one or two, you know, stragglers off somewhere. Um, you know, we know it's hard to get, uh, you know, installers these days and, and you know, they, they kind of go out in the field and they just look for the strongest signal and they, they connect it, you know, uh, it's not always to the right sector. So you should really, again, take some time and, and even, if anything, not even migrating to horns, this is just good practice in general, right? Is going out and uh, again, taking some time to plan out this deployment before you do it, just don't uh, go by horns and throw them up, right? So there's a, a thought process that you should go to. Um, you know, use down tilt as needed to achieve coverage goals, right? So again, you know, down, down tilt is a, a very uh, powerful mechanism and it's a, a very good tool that you can use for proper RF planning uh, and proper RF propagation, right? So use down tilt, it's there for you. There's no reason to mount all your antennas, all your horns at zero degrees flat to go as far as you can possibly go, right? So have a distance, have a coverage area distance in, in mind and adjust your down tilt and use a proper gain for that particular distance. You know, the hybrid antenna solution is not the best approach, but it works. It works for a lot of people. You know, I would love to just tell you, yeah, buy all horns, um, you know, and that's all great. But honestly, you know, it's not necessary for everybody. So the hybrid, uh, you know, approach, if it works for you, that's great. You know, I mean, you know, as long as you start deploying some horns on your network, uh, you'll you'll get there, right? Things will get better and eventually... Uh, ultimately, you'll you'll end up going to all horns, but it's not something that you have to do right away. And then again, the planning the planning part. Plan before you deploy. You know, Caleb and myself are, are always here uh, to help uh, with your deployments. Whether this is the, your first time hearing about horns, even if you've been using horns, you know, there's there's still a lot of information that uh, Caleb and I have, and good practices and other things that we can help. And we're we're happy to work with each of you. Uh, directly. So what you have to do is just kind of reach out to us and, uh, you know, we'll be happy to kind of work with you guys. A few other things here, you know, know where to buy our products, right? So we have a stock locator on our site, Double Radius uh, participates in this. So if you want to know what they have in stock, you can actually, you know, find it on our website or you can go to their website and, and see it direct. Um, the big question we always get is how far do your your antennas go, right? So we 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 spent a lot of time and money, kind of creating this link calculator on our website. It's really really good. Um, so use use it, right? Uh, again, when you're trying to figure out how you're going to deploy these horns and where you're going to go, this is the the number one tool that you can use to kind of see what the propagation will be. And you know we also have the ability to uh, choose different uh, radio manufacturers in here which have preloaded MCS rates for them. So the colors that you see here aren't signal. It shows you the areas in which you would achieve the different MCS rates from your radio. So it's a really cool stuff. Um, you know, join our community. Uh, we have a, an, a fairly active forum, rfelab.com, but uh, Definitely our Facebook groups on social media is way more active. So, you know, even if you're not a big social media guy and you don't like to post or whatever, just join Facebook and, you know, join the RF Elements English group and other groups. And you could just troll and look at what people are talking about. Right? It's a great place to, to get uh, your questions answered. Uh, typically, you can just search your particular problem and chances are you'll, you'll find the solution there. So that's great stuff. Um, our YouTube channel, again, something that we put uh, a lot of time and energy into building. We have a, a lot of really cool videos on there. Our Wisp Travelers, one video series that, we, that we've done where we traveled the country, right, and visited a whole bunch of different uh, Wisps and, and interviewed how 
you know, what kind of problems they had and how they solved the, their problems. So this WISP Traveler series on our YouTube channel is is pretty badass, and I would suggest that you go there, and, and I bet you you'll find at least one WISP on there that's dealing with an issue you're dealing with right now, and uh, you'll learn how to solve that problem. Education at the uh, RF Elements is really important, right? I mean, we, we really try and be a responsible vendor to the industry. I mean, uh, you know, of course, everybody's here to at RF Elements wants to sell antennas, but, uh, you know, our, our company philosophy goes beyond just sales, right? We really want to educate the customer base because um, a smart customer is, uh, you know, a powerful customer. And one of the things that we do is we have our inside wireless video series where we talk about everything RF, right? Uh, from the basics of what's an antenna to what's noise floor to much higher, uh, you know, uh, more in-depth topics like qual modulation and, and different things like that. So, you know, whether you have new guys coming on board, this is a great series to teach them about RF. Uh, maybe, you know, you used to work with RF, uh, not for outdoor wireless networks, but uh, on different things. You know, this is a good way to sharpen your RF skills that, you know, pertain more to the outdoor WISP market, which is different than, you know, radar and other things that you may have done in the past. It's a really good uh, educational series and, 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 and give it a give it a go. And then, you know, just stay tuned. Again, you know, we're all over social media, YouTube channel, Facebook, uh, Instagram, um, our forum, rflab.com. And then of course, again, our, our website, rfelements.com is a great place to uh, get information and, and stay in tune to what we have, you know, coming out next and new things from RF Elements. And that's it. We go to Q&A now. Great. Yeah, Thanks, Pass. Oh, go ahead, Caleb. Sorry, I'm used to just bulldozing the conversation, so <laughs> that's the way I roll. So the the one other sort of technical point uh, I'd like to hop into is, you know, when we we work through people that are new to horns and they want to start deploying it, um, the most common issue that we run into once you get past the whole, you know, how far horn go conversation, you do the link planner, you help them, you know, figure out what, what your realistic ranges and stuff. You know, a lot of times when we start with this testing, it's usually they take an existing sector, you know, a 90 degree or a 60 degree, 45 or whatever, cut over to a horn. And there's one or two things that people run into that might be a tech issue and they're actually very straightforward one is not knowing where your cpes are uh tasso's pointed that out in the slide we see that quite a bit you know you think it's should be connecting in the main part of the cpe but because or the ap but you don't really know where that cp is physically located so it may be way off to the side or the back and now all of a sudden that signal is decreased a lot you're like oh the performance here dropped well it's because you didn't know where it is you're shooting into the side the other thing that we run into is, you know, when you look at the uh, RF propagation with traditional patch array sector, you know, you've got all those side lobes, not only on the sides, but also on the top and bottom. And what we find is, especially when you're using a lower cost CPE device that also has its own series of lobes, right? Because, uh, you know, an antenna is an antenna when you're using the patch array in a lower cost type CPE device. You know, it's got a lot of lobes too. And long story short, you know, we run into cases where people deploy and go, oh, yeah, my signals went up really good across 10 of my clients, but I've got three that I know are in the main beam that, you know, they've gotten really weak or they're flaky or whatnot. Long story short is those were actually connected not to the main beam of the sector, but to one of the side lobes of the sector, right? It wasn't fully tuned in, or you had kind of a side lobe to side lobe connection. And now when you replace that lobey sort of gross looking patch array sector with a horn, which has very clean edges and that one central main beam, you know, it doesn't look right. Solution to this is actually very straightforward. You just basically retune, you know, repoint the CPE connection and it brings it right up. So that's really it. It's it's a very sort of straightforward process. Um, you know, those are the two things you might just run into. And other than that, you know, if you're if you're horn curious, you know, try one is what I always tell folks. You know, find a busy sector. Find one where you've got modulation rates that are kind of over the place. You know, the, you're you're getting a lot of latency and jitter and stuff like that. Swap out that sector with a horn, 
you know, and with our advice and guidance and stuff, you'll find it's very straightforward. And then from there on, it's basically replicating that same success. So it's, it's something I've helped out quite a lot. Uh, the last year and a half I've been here and it's been a very straightforward process, which is hard to say a lot of times when you're doing technology swaps. So that was the only one main point I wanted to hop in there with. Awesome. Thanks, Caleb. So it doesn't look, looks like we have no questions. I quickly just wanted to share um, and show my screen really quick. And I'm going, let me know when you guys can see. Um, yep. So yep. we just, you can see it? Yep. Awesome. So we just launched um, our Canadian um, website um, last week. So up here on the right hand side if you go on our website it'll show right now i'm in the canada side um, and it's in canadian dollars and we have now uploaded all of the rf elements that we currently have in stock at our toronto warehouse um, on the website so this is live now soon it'll be connected to rf element stock locator so when you're actually looking for gear in canada um, it'll pull and show you what we have in stock um, on the rf element side but in the meantime you'll be able to see everything on um, the Double Radius site. So it's just ca.doubleradius.com, and then you go under to RF Elements, and it'll show you all of our stock in Canadian dollars. And then if you have any other further questions um, and want to reach out to the sales team, it's just sales at doubleradius.com, and they can get you all um, set up with new logins and whatnot to our um, Canada site. Excellent. That's very cool. I'm excited for that. I know I've yeah, been... Awesome receiving uh, lots of emails and calls from people asking for more inventory up uh, in Canada. So we're happy that uh, you guys uh, did the right thing and helped us out in bringing more inventory to Canada. That's awesome. Yeah, no, we're excited. So if there's any anyone who's looking for anything, and even if we don't have it, just send sales an email and we'll make sure to, to bring in um, whatever's, if there's anything missing. I know we, we brought in a few um, other options to um, RF elements specific, specific that we didn't have and we brought them in I think a couple of weeks ago so if there's there's something that's not there that's not showing and, and just let us know and we'll we'll bring it up there and put it in Toronto so anyways it doesn't look like we have any questions um, this will be posted on our YouTube channel, and I'm sure our elements will be sharing this on their social media channels. Um, so if anyone is still look, you know, has any other questions, reach out to sales at doubleradius.com or to Tassos and Caleb, and we will get you your answers. And in the meantime, thanks Tassos and Caleb. Really appreciate your time, and um, have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Right, bye.